Uh, you know, what you got here is not by accident. What you've got here tonight, what's going on here tonight, is not by accident. Uh, you don't, you don't have, you don't, you don't just wake up one day and oh, and the Holy Ghost of God is moving through a service and and the Lord is dealing and God's a working the way uh, that He has been uh, even last night tonight and preacher I know uh, through the year that y'all are here and uh, and every Sunday whenever you come in. Uh, there's some things that are already in place and you ought to thank God for it, amen. I've heard a lot of the, boy, the people testifying and, 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 and rightly so. Uh, your preacher on that here, here, he will not say anything about himself and his wife won't say anything about herself. They love the Lord and they, and by the way, we know it's all God, say amen. There ain't no doubt about that, but God's given you a man of God, amen. God's given you a preacher and a preacher's wife that loves you. And uh, brother, you hey, that, that's gold, amen. Uh, you've got the best preacher you, hey, right here at this church, you've got the man of God that God wants you to have. And uh, so brother, uh, I'm just saying, the Lord put you here, preacher. Uh, Jeremiah 3, 15, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which you feed you with knowledge and understanding, amen. And uh, you've been here now, what, 30 24 years, same thing with the, down there, down where we're at. And uh, I'm just grateful that uh, the Lord has used him here. But now, uh, wait a minute now, you got a man of God. Well, let me tell you, you got the right word of God around here. You got that King James Bible, say amen. And uh, brother, there's nothing else, say amen. There's nothing, to, uh, I like the sign. Only 1611 KJV used in preaching and teaching, amen. Well, that's the way it ought to be, amen. But you got the right Bible around here, praise God. Boy, last night, that choir getting up singing, preacher, I, I, I was just soaking it up. I mean, choir singing, I mean, them old-fashioned songs and God uh, touching them, amen. And then, uh, and then Brother Waters, y'all y'all come and just sing the specials and all of that. Keep on singing, preacher, amen. I love Miss Stormy gets up, and when God goes to really getting on her, have you noticed that? I noticed it, amen. And uh, she stands on them toes, like trying to get closer to it. Yay! Amen. I mean, trying to get up there, and I, and I, hey, that man's married to Stormy. Don't laugh about that either, amen. Some of y'all, I know your wife, you, you married to Tornado, amen. <laughs> A hurricane or tsunami, say amen. I, I, I don't know. I, I, so hey, you just got stormy, all right. You're doing all right, amen. And uh, but I, I say to God's giving you the right thing. You got the right music. You got the right man of God. Hey, you got the right uh, Bible. Praise God. By the way, young and y'all going out soul winning. Oh yeah, now on Monday night going knocking doors and telling people about the Lord, it's a soul winning church, amen. Hey, never quit that, amen. Never quit knocking doors, never quit telling people about Jesus, all right. A church ought to be a soul winning church, don't you agree with that, amen. And the preacher's already said it, but hey, we're not the world, amen. We're not trying to live like the world, act like the world, dress like the world. Hey, there's a difference in us. Uh, brother, we are unique as you preach this morning, amen. Uh, but we are different, amen. Hey, hey, nothing wrong with having good standards at the house of God. Uh, nothing wrong with you living holy and being what God would have you to be. But that's right around here, amen. Hey, what's wrong with that? Nothing, amen. Well, Brother Seitler used to come to our church and he, he, he talked about the music and all the things and all that and that's what he would say. He'd say amazing grace. What's wrong with that? There is the fountain. What's wrong with that? i tell you what's wrong with it. Nothing. Amen. <laughs> and we'd all just say amen to the man of God. All right. And I, but you got all these things in place. And so I just want to give you something just simple. A lot of you preachers, hey, you said it right, preacher. We're not, there's no, there's no cookie cutter preachers around here. We're all, I mean, from different places that I, and you talk about different personalities, amen. I mean, it's just different, all right. We are truly peculiar men of God, amen. And, uh, but it's an old fashioned crowd. Hey, and, and we're trying to stay in the old time way, say amen. And we're trying to do it like we've been taught to do it, is that right? And uh, brother, like the, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. I love that song y'all sang the other night uh, about the, the y'all's church, amen. And how they, per was it 1962 when your granddaddy, is that right? Uh, boy, imagine that. Granddaddy has stomped around in this pulpit, amen, and preached the word of God. Daddy's uh, uh, stomped around and told people about the Lord and preacher. Now God's got you up here doing it, amen. I'm just saying God's good, ain't he? 
And boy, God's given us much. And I, I, I love old-fashioned preaching. And by the way, I love these preachers around here. Amen. Amen. And, I, I, you know, I, I get around these older men of God. And I say to all of you that, hey, uh, boy, you, God uh, touched you. God gave you great courage. And God gave you great conviction. Amen. Yeah. And I say amen yeah. to the good men of God that are here. Uh, that Brother God has blessed us with. I, I think about those that have gone before us. But, uh, but what, have they, what is all that for? They gave us all these things, and I just say, I just want to kind of encourage you a little bit. I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 22. Proverbs chapter 22. Because if God's given us all this, and God's blessed the way he is, souls are being saved, lives are being changed, God's got his hand on it, amen. We don't want to do nothing to mess that up. Look in Proverbs chapter 22, and look in verse 28. He said, remove not, the ancient landmark which thy fathers have said. Turn with me to chapter, or look in chapter 23, the chapter next to it, and look in verse 10. Remove not the old landmark and enter not into the fields of the fatherless. Go back to Deuteronomy chapter 19. Go to Deuteronomy in the Old Testament chapter 19. And look at with me in verse 14. Thou shalt not remove thy neighbor's landmark which they of old time, now I like that, I'm just telling you. <laughs> they of old time, amen. Old time religion, old time preaching, old time singing, amen. Old time shouting, brother, and giving God the glory that they have set in thine inheritance, which thou shalt inherit in the land that the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Now look at one more, look in chapter 23, just turn over a couple of chapters. Chapter 23, and look with me down in verse, uh, down, I believe, no, 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 not chapter 23, chapter 27, go to chapter 27, I'm sorry. Chapter 27 and verse 17. The Bible just simply says again uh, in verse 17, now this is more, this is more strong with it in it. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's landmark and all the people shall say, Amen. Lord, help us tonight, and God, it's your word. And Lord, we, Lord, I see Lord, so much good here in Emmanuel Baptist Church, and I just pray, oh dear God, these landmarks that God, you've nailed down and you've nailed them in place. Lord, in this good church, Lord, would you help us? And Lord, every preacher here, God, we've been under good men of God, and Lord, you have helped us, Lord, to learn the word. But God, we want to be loyal to the word. We want to preach the word till the day we die. And that God ever let us stand, God, for old time religion in this day that we live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. I just want to give you something simple right here. And now, when I read this, and it says, remove not the ancient landmark. Now, preacher, you're holding that King James Bible. There's a good landmark. Say amen right there. Uh, the good singing you got, again, that's a good landmark. Amen. Uh, really, these landmarks were just that. They were, uh, they were boundary lines for property. And uh, they would pile up a, uh, a thing of rocks down here, do another one down there. And that line from that, that rock... Uh, that pile of rocks to that pile of rocks that was the landmark and well, and your property was set like that uh, yours might be adjoining to another neighbor's right next to you and so that landmark might represent both of your lines uh, that go down through that uh, but the the command was this remove not the ancient landmark and I just uh, just think of it like that it was a command from God it was God saying not, uh, not, not to move it. It was God uh, saying that these landmarks are here uh, for a reason, amen. They are sure, uh, they are set, and they're there to stay, amen. And, uh, but not just to command, think about this. I wonder if God didn't write that and say, remove not the ancient landmark because of a correction. In other words, somebody, had, somebody moved it. Somebody had, had, uh, had slid it over, and we'll talk about that in just a minute, but somebody had began to move them. Preacher, maybe it wasn't a big move, and maybe it wasn't, uh, it wasn't something that everybody notices all of a sudden. Uh, it's just, and by the way, that's the way it usually is. It's just, let's slip a song in here, and, and well, we'll just change a little bit here, and, and, and maybe we'll not do this anymore, and maybe we'll not preach that anymore, and maybe we'll not expect that anymore, and I'm just telling you, hey, it's just a small thing, but I imagine it was written for correction. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have said. 
And then I and then I see this. I what we just read in Deuteronomy: "Cursed be he that removeth his neighbor's labor." Uh, it's, it's a curse, brother. I've seen what happens to preachers and families when they begin to leave right, what they know is right. Hey, when they leave and get out, uh, boy, we heard testimony after testimony here tonight about. Well, I got away from the Lord, and God had mercy, and I'm back in now. Amen. But hey. You don't want to tempt God while you're out there like that, brother. Amen. You don't want to mess around with, hey, with the judgment of God and God's curse, uh, brother, that comes. And then I say this, the caution. The caution to me and you that if you, if you have these landmarks in place, preacher, then we don't want to lose them. Amen. Uh, we're here. Man, I could not imagine. Imagine coming to Emmanuel Baptist Church and the, and the wrong Bible was preached. Imagine coming up here and, and it's not that good singing, but it's all that other going on. I can tell you what else would go out the door. The Holy Ghost of God preaching. Uh, your preacher is sensitive to the Holy Spirit of God. Have you noticed that? Have you noticed the, uh, through the service and uh, when the preaching and the singing and maybe, uh, uh, thank you preacher for not being just confined to the list that you were going to do when the service started, you know. But instead saying, Holy Ghost, who do you want? And preacher, he, he said, oh, we need, we need that. And God said, I want that on, on giving me the glory. Yeah, yeah. Then you had the, uh, boy, the good testimonies and, and the waters of singing. Amen, brother yeah. Daniel. Hey, singing all that, that was ordered to the Lord. Yeah. Then uh, directed a little further and then singing another. And then yeah. God touching hearts and people testifying. The well, it was last night. But that don't care. Okay, you don't got that by accident. You don't get that by accident. You see, we leave these landmarks, then the Lord walks out the door with them. We leave this, and this church is not what it is now. It's a different church, and that's not what God wants. So let me just give you some simple things on this. I, 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 again, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir because I'm preaching to good preachers. I'm preaching to men that have good churches. Uh, maybe this is just something that helps you to strengthen the things that remain, amen. And uh, by the grace of God, to stay where God's put us, amen. Hey, what is it, snake bit but not quit, amen. Uh, I don't know. I, but So write this down. They're previous lands marks their previous landmarks. Y'all, I didn't wake up one day and just start and say, well, I think I'll write me a Bible and I think I'll believe all this. I think I'll start doing all this. You know where I got it from? I got it from my old man of God. I got it from Preacher Moore, Brother Preston Moore, uh, my pastor, amen. Uh, Brother Hill, we were in that church and Brother William, you were in that church, amen. And uh, Brother Under, our pastor that stayed there in that one church for over 40 years and God used that man of God. But I tell you what, we had a man of God that loved the Lord and uh, hey it, it was not afraid to preach thus saith the Lord praise God but that's my preacher but hey you could stand and name your preacher you could name that man of God that you got saved under that you got raised under he taught you the word of God he took that word of God and he committed it to some faithful man and that would pe teach others also amen. amen now you understand God's still doing that yeah. preacher come move just for a minute that word of God that's being preached. We talked about that previous generation, but and we look back at a previous generation before us. Right. But these youngins, preacher, they look to you. Right. They look to their man of God. Yeah. They look to a man of God that's trying to, hey, hold that Bible out to them as you walk by. Hey, that by the grace of God, see, they'll take one day. They'll take that word of God. But it's not just the physical aspect of taking a Bible. They'll take your convictions. They'll take what you believe. They'll take your spirit. Elijah or Elisha looked at Elijah. And what was the very thing that he wanted more than these things? Oh, give me your old Bible, preacher. No. Oh, well, give me this, preacher. No. He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Amen. I want what you got, man of God. I just say, we can't lose what we've got. We got to give it to somebody else. Hey. Preacher, you're the man of God around here. And these youngins, hey, now we're all in here and we preach a little bit, but we come and go. I'm heading back, I'll head back to Locust Grove. These fellows will head back to their places. But hey, you young people look up here. You got a man of God. The Bible says, whose faith follow, considering the end of their conversation. You see that? You watch that man of God and you see how he conducts himself. You see how he preaches the word of God. And uh, brother, you ought to believe what he believes. Say amen. amen. But you ought to live how he lives. You ought to, you ought to look at how, how, how God uses him. You ought to see. But I tell you what, you better know the God he knows. Amen. Thank you, preacher. 
You better know the God he knows. You see that previous generation, hey, when I, when I think about that previous generation, hey, I'm the same way. I got no apologies for the preachers that I sat under. Well, but preacher, they, they, they were holy men. Now, I'm just saying they were holy in their life. They were holy in their walk. Brother, I grew up, I mean, I grew up with our, our, our revival was, uh, was always Brother Harold Seitler, I went Brother Mays Jackson on Monday night, Brother Harold Seitler on Tuesday night, and then they had, oh, they'd have Billy Kelly, Bob Kelly, they had all these old men of God uh, coming in, Brother Henson uh, coming in and preaching, and uh, Brother Sammy Allen coming in and preaching, and hey, all these great men of God that, I mean, boy, I, I just grew up loving them, amen. But they were holy, hey, they were holy men. They did not, they did not, uh, uh, you know, like when, the, when the Jesus said about John, what went you out for to see? He said, a man shaking in the wind, you know, you couldn't move John. And you couldn't move these men of God. And he said, what did you go out and see, a man clothed in soft raiment? He said, no, you couldn't mold those men. You weren't going to get around them and they just, like they go off your direction one day. No, they stayed with that book. And I say, brother, uh, by the grace of God in the day that we live, uh, we ought to say, Lord, if you'll let me live and you'll let me breathe, God, and I got any length of days in my life, I'm going to preach the word, amen. I stay in the old time way. <laughs> now, look right here with me. They were holy men. They were honorable men. I say this. They were humble men. They were honest men. And I'll give you this. They were hard men. And I want to, uh, let me just say, you, uh, the, your preacher, and that's all of us at our churches, but this is your preacher too. Has your preacher ever got up and, and now we heard that testimony of that dear sister back here this morning. And I, here, I heard that a little different. I mean, I, I heard about how, how God, you know, the Lord restored and God was touching her. But she said, my preacher and his wife sat down with me and told me some hard, honest things said my preacher and his wife told me some things I didn't want to hear and sometimes you look up here and you think and here we think when a preacher's preaching that way boy the preacher's really hard and he's having to nail it down and you think well boy he likes that he's just a hard man Hey, boy, I tell you what, he just loves getting up and just crushing uh, people. And boy, he likes to tell people how wrong they are. And I, can I tell you something? It takes somebody that loves you greatly to tell you the truth. It takes somebody that loves you greatly to sit down, amen, and to take a sister and say, hey, there's something wrong here and we need to get it right, amen. It takes an old-fashioned man of God to, to stand up and to preach things that he knows the congregation isn't gonna understand or they don't wanna hear it uh, right at that time, amen. Uh, but I just say this, aren't you glad you got a man of God that's got the Holy Ghost? Aren't you glad you got a man of God that takes the word of God and loves you enough to preach it that way? Every once in a while, God will use a good man of God. Let me just mention this to us preachers. This, you know, you say a, a hard man, but a man that's willing, he loves you enough to tell you. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. Preachers, every once in a while, we see our brother, and they're straying that other way. They're just straying that other way. And we can, I hear sometimes, Lord says, just be silent, I'll deal with them. And you do that, you back off and let the Lord deal with them. But every once in a while, if you see me straying, you men of God, but led better, Brother Neil, Brother Paul, if you see me, what I wouldn't give if you wouldn't come to me and say, Brother Terrell, I love you, but why you, what, what's going on? Why are you going that away? Why, why y'all changing your singing a little bit? Why, why, why aren't y'all do it here? You, you, you ha that's one of the things that usually mark, I mean, a man of God is the fact that he does not change. Right, right, right. But if you begin to change, yeah, you need somebody. And here, we don't need to pull this thing where we, brother, you're right. Hey, we're, we're, boy, we, we raise up with pride and I, well, who are you? I'm the man of God. I'll do what I want to do. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Who'd you say we were? Hey, all I know, I, I know what Terrell Hopkins was. Terrell Hopkins is a drunkard's kid. Terrell Hopkins was raised in a drunkard's home. And hey, Terrell Hopkins didn't deserve nothing. And God, I, I don't even feel like God should ever save me, but he did. Much less call me to preach, but he did, amen. 
God did that. <laughs> Excuse me. God. Don't got COVID. It's all right. <laughs> Not much of it anyway. Sorry, brother. It's all over you now. Amen. <laughs> you know. Can I, hey, can I say this? Hey, but, but we don't deserve nothing. We got what, what I get to preach on a, on, on, in a service at this church. Brother, I ought to be in hell. Brother, I didn't deserve nothing. I, I, brother, the Lord came by like, my, like down my way. I, brother, when I was an outcast and had nothing and our family was lost and nobody should have cared about us, but God sent a bus down to our house. God sent people down to our house that loved us. And we got in. And I just say this, if you got somebody that loves you enough to look you in the face and say, what's wrong? And, and, and what I see is not, that's not, they, that's not the old preacher that I knew. And, and why are you deviating from that book? Can I say, why don't you instead, you know, if I'm a church member, instead of getting mad at the man of God, what I ought to say is, God, I can't believe you let a man preach with all these people sitting here and you let that man of God deal with what I had going on in my life. But I'm talking to us, I, I'm talking to us preachers. I'm saying, you got, hey, you better let somebody Hey, we better not get too big for our britches. Where, where, hey, let me ask you. We, all, we, we measure the, the mark of a young person by how they take correction, right? How do we take correction, man of God? How's Terrell Hopkins take that bow up? But see, that previous generation, I watched them preacher. And I tell you, my preacher many a time is a young man. Oh, brother, hey, you talk about him knowing. The Holy Ghost just knowing. I've seen him come in our choir room before and and I mean, you know, he'd always come in, he'd, he'd comb his little hair, you know, he had hair. I mean, he'd comb his hair. And, and boy, we'd get scared because I'm like, man, if he come, he's about to do something. He'd come in there, and I, I remember times where in the choir, that was his little sounding board there. And he'd say, Terrell Hopkins, he'd say, there's a time when you love sinners, son. And you had people saved, and they was usually having people baptized all the time. When would you quit loving them? Now, I didn't hear. That's in front of the whole choir. Oh, I got mad, and boy, I stomped out of there. Oh, no. It was about half a second, and tears was running down my face, and I was on my face in the choir. I'm talking about somebody that loved you enough. See, that previous generation, hey, we, we got it honestly from them, amen. We got it. You know what? We, we was around them men of God that cared. We was around them men of God that cried. We was, a man, hey, we was around them men of God that carried the load. Is that right? I'm just talking about simple stuff. Hey, th th these landmarks here, it's our Father's landmarks. But I just say this, can I just remind you that they're, they're not just, our, they're, they're not just uh, previous landmarks, it's, it's per they're permanent landmarks. And, and what I mean by that is they're just fixed, all right? Dude, all right, they're called a landmark, Proverbs. They're called the ancient landmarks. They, what we believe, it's not, it doesn't float with the, with the generation that we're in. What you believe and where you stand doesn't float and, and move around. No, what we know the Word of God says is fixed in the Word of God. I said it's fixed in the Word of God. It's right there. That's where we stand. That's how we live. And by the way, I, brother, when you begin to do that, and, and it's one thing to do it because preacher does it. It's another to do it because mom and daddy do it. But when God Almighty nails it down in your heart, and brother, you see it in the Word of God yourself, and God gives you your convictions, and you know where to stand, and you know what God said, you realize Lord, a long time ago you fixed this. You set the you set the boundaries. You laid the lines, and God, that's where we stand, Amen. And I tell you, brother, we do it. You know how long we do that till we die or Jesus comes, Amen. Hey, there is nothing else, Amen. Either the Lord comes or, or they lay us in a grave one day. And if they do, man, alive, I tell you what, if you lay me in the grave and you walk by there and you're like, oh, poor brother. And by the way, don't walk by my grave and go, don't he look natural? I don't look natural. I don't ever lay there frowning, all that kind of stuff. I hope they can somehow wire a smile on my face. Somehow, I like while I'm just laying there in that casket. I like, and, and if y'all, hey, if they do, tie a rope to me, and when people walk by, drill a hole in the side of that casket and pull it up where I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> what's that got to do with the landmark? Nothing. <laughs> but do that hey hey can't have a landmark without it being a persecuted landmark guess what we got foes 
We got a crowd that wants to take what we believe, and I and again, we don't magnify what they do and all that stuff, but they want to reduce it. They want us to hear. They want to take the, the, the doctrine we have. They want to take the standards you got. They want to take the soul winning, the separation, the shouting. And it does not matter which one it is. They, hey, they want to reduce it. Well, uh, you don't have to do that anymore. And again, but part of that is attacking again, attacking where they got it. And here's the shame. That's what they used to be. My prayer would be they'd repent and God bring some of them back. Wouldn't that be a blessing? I'd love to see that. But, I, but I, I say, if you already know that's what's going to happen, they're going to try to reduce that. They're going to say, well, that's not. And by the way, uh, I didn't think me, me or you or anybody else, I didn't think our first name is holy and our last name sure ain't ghost. Right, 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 yeah. And for me to say, well, I tell you what, church, this is really, really important, but that's not important anymore. Y'all, Terrell Hopkins ain't got that right. Hey, right. Nay, neither does any other preacher. Yeah. So you understand these things right here. Uh, brother, they're persecuted. They're going to be persecuted. By the way, you're going to be the only one. Uh, that's so good, uh, preacher. Hey, uh, but what's wrong with being the only soul winning church around? What's wrong with being the only King James church around? Amen. What's wrong with being the only church with a little, hey, with, that, that shouts and, and brother people praise God and run the aisles a little bit? Hey, uh, you know, you can still be soul winning and be shouting. Oh, I got either one. No, you just be both, praise God. And uh, God will bless it, praise the Lord. Now, hey, hey, they try to reduce it, they try to remove it, belittle it, blend it, whatever you want to call it. And just be careful with it, preachers. I'm saying, we don't bring in one song. We don't, hey, you, you can't do that. Well, let's just come on now. I heard it. it's got some good words. Well, so does Stairway to Heaven, but I'm not going to say, no, I'm kidding now. It really don't. I'm kidding. Now, some of y'all are like, what is that? I, it's not a spiritual song, kids. All right, amen. But, I, but hey, but I ain't gonna, just because something got good words don't make it right. Say amen. You know? And so we got to stay, stay right with it. All right, they try to replace it, ridicule it. Oh, in other words, they're against it. But I, I just, all I'm trying to do is just remind you of what God's given you. And I, I, I can't help. These are perpetual landmarks. This is our future. And I mean, you know, it's one thing to, to preach it. And if we're going to preach it, we ought to practice it. And if we're going to practice it, then we ought to protect it. And we ought to keep them. Amen. But I just say this. What good are they, are they at all if we don't pass it on? Uh, Heritage Baptist Church. Been there for, I mean, in that place, we built the new building in 2005. And any preacher, that if you're at your church and you, and you, and here, and, and, and I ain't up in age, say amen. Thank you, brother. But I feel that way sometimes. But I don't care who you are. I about, you know, I don't know when the time comes and I meet the Lord. I don't know how, you know, you bring somebody in, let them follow you. I don't know. Do you teach a church how to get somebody? I don't know how God does all that. But I just know this. Anybody that invests their life, preacher, you invest your life at Emmanuel. We don't ever want to come in here one day and see it going another way. And I'll tell you what, there's only one way that can, hey, the, you know how, how you keep from that? You have a bunch of young people that say, you know what, we're going to stay in the old time way. And we're going to hold to the ancient landmarks and we're not removing a one of them. And, and I've noticed, hey, by the way, preacher, what a commendation. Children whose parents, and I'm so sorry, when your mom and daddy have gone another way. But I'm sitting there rejoicing back there when I'm thinking, thank God for a granddaddy and a grandmama that says, I'll tell you what I'll do. Hey, I'll love them and I'll raise them, amen, and I'll keep them in the church and we ain't moving the landmarks, amen. Thank God for a granny and a grandpapa, amen. Papa, granny, whatever. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right, but... I sure am glad. I'm glad. Hey, I'm glad the land, that God's given us these landmarks. Hey, we got one short life we can live. Nail them landmarks down. Hey, stay with them to the day you die. Pass them on to that younger generation. And by the grace of God, this thing, how's it still going on? All the way from 2,000 years ago, over 2,000 years ago till today. Hey, thank God there's a crowd that never moved and preached. Thank God there's a crowd that stood and stayed and never changed. Amen. God help us by your heads. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? 
head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.